Start drilling a couple holes. We're starting off with lake trout. It's the main target. It's a little windy, but it's nice. So. Went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns. All right, so he, see, he's coming up, he's coming up, he's coming up, he's coming up. Come on. Nope. Couple follows, but they didn't commit. Yeah. No, int showed no interest. Well, this should definitely help my Laker game. It's about that time. The original past blue ribbon. Nothing going on shallow, so we're going deep right now. Shallow is a bust. Well, this looks like a good spot for me to draw a hole. I'll mark it with this PBR, this scissor, and this shiner. Okay. Ninety-one feet. All right. Let's see. Who lives in ninety-one feet? If anyone lives in ninety-one feet. Oh, no fish landed. A couple misses. Putting fresh bait on consistently. I don't know. Like like trout are not as easy as they you know you think sometimes. Uh, I don't know. It's uh. Kind of this contour where there's like a bunch of holes has been pretty good, so I don't know. It's tough to figure out. But we're thinking about uh, perhaps, since I have to avoid heavy traffic later, um, perhaps we'll make a move to some shallow water fishing, set some live baits, see what happens out there. Something tells me the lake trout might not happen today, but uh, let's see if we can get one. Spinning, we spinning. Come on, spinning. Got a bite. I'm a big sucker. How's it feel? Feels like I got a fish on there. Like a nice fish? No. Nah. No. I don't know. It looks pretty good. This, the line's pretty tight. That's definitely a pike. Let him run. Let him run. Well, oh, fish. I'm gonna have to uh here, hold this with me. I can grab that. I can go. You're gonna grab him? I can grab him. Okay. Well we got 25 pound leader. So we'll be we got a shot. We can take our time here. You see him yet? Ooh, baby. Oh, it's a pike. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Ooh. Okay. Just like it's that. Good size to keep too. That. Damn. Beautiful pike. Damn. Fish. Dang man. Right, dude, nice. That was easy, huh? Yeah. That was easy. <laughs> yeah. That was nice. <laughs> All right, guys, we got a pike for our Adirondacks catch and cook. It was either going to be a lake trout or a pike. We got we scored a decent sized pike here. Uh, we're going to harvest that. You got something? Hmm. Things are per currently pretty quiet. Not seeing much. Not seeing much. This is our last move right here. Uh, still got an hour or two. Hopefully we can pick something in the next half hour. But uh, we set up some more flags. More dead sticks. Uh, tough. Tough last day. I think we made a couple of wrong moves today, but that's okay. Uh, but I'm going to turn off the camera right now. Um, we will pick up when I'm in the kitchen filleting the pike. But if we do get something... Cameras are going to turn back on. Let's see though. Let's see what happens from here. Um, I'm in the right area, so I think it's just hopefully this works out. Okay, so I have Mary over here. Uh, Mary, we've seen we, we did a video of lake trout and we did salmon. So a couple facts about this: pike are related to pickerel and muskellunge. However, some people have like kind of mixed feelings towards pike. Um, I remember as a kid when I went to college, I went up to Lake Champlain and I used to see dead pike on the ice um, because they're kind of viewed as somewhat of a nuisance to both bass anglers and some trout anglers. However, the opinion is changing slowly. <laughs> Mario's never worked with pike. Is this the first time you've seen one in person? This is the first time I've ever seen a pike in person. 
Um, and I read a lot about it, and as you can tell from the other videos, you never see me wearing gloves. <laughs> I'm wearing gloves this time, because these things are slimy as hell. So, Mario's never fully had one. I've eaten it once, and I thought it was great. However, it was a little, you know, different. But uh, Mario's gonna be a great example of first time filleting, cooking, trying. It's gonna be very genuine reactions. So that's gonna be fun, because a lot of people are intimidated by pike based on the bone structure, things they read about on the internet. Same holds true for pickerel. Pickerel and pike are exchangeable. They're the same fish, basically. Pike just get much larger. So I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod right now. I'm gonna let Mario get to work. Let's see if how, how this goes. I think this one's gonna be fun and pretty interesting. No, there's not much to this, the inside of this thing here. There's the heart and all that. And it must have been real hungry when you found them. There's the liver. Mm -hmm. That's no. a beautiful liver. Look how clean that is. So um, that, that but the stomach is completely empty. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. So he went right at you. All right. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take these fillets off. It's pretty standard right here, right? Yeah, I'm going to do pretty standard here. Um, I'm going to cut right across this rib cage because it's a long rib cage. I wouldn't be able to fillet that out. Mm -hmm. so, you can feel it. You can feel the knife cutting through all those bones. So we're going to keep slicing down here. How's that slime with the paper towel still lo still loaded? Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, look at watch my hand. Yep. Still loaded. Okay, that's one fillet. Now the bone structure. I mean, there's really not much meat there. I mean, you can see it. So yeah. Let's take this swim bladder out of here, so it's not in my, so it's not in my it's way. A lot of meat on this thing, actually, though. Yeah, it's a lot of meat, um, and you know, other than the Y bone. We're not going to have uh, too much loss on this here. Whoa. That's slime. That's slime. I really should have put a piece of newspaper down. But who the hell has a newspaper? <laughs> <laughs> I really, if I didn't have a fireplace, I probably wouldn't even have a newspaper in this house. You want to kind of aim so that you end up just grazing the backbone. That backbone, and then when you fly over these fins, you want to be right, right over them. I'll tell you that that beat up this knife real quick. Not even sure. Yeah, look. Bam. There's, there's not much on there. That's a nice um, little work of art he did there. Yeah. There you go. Open his mouth. Let's for us. open his mouth here. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that monster right there. Look at the teeth that that just grab and hold the prey. I'm gonna wipe the slime off this knife. It's like wipe the slime off everything. Lots of slime. Lots of slime. This is the, the moral of this story here. Is that a lot of slime? And that thing really killed this plate, so we're gonna give this a shot. It seems like he's done this before, right? Just another reason why I don't like. I like to scale first because right. the scale will go all over the place. So this is a simple way. Now you know what size portions you want. You know what you're going to do with it. You're going to cook it a certain way. So you know what. These are the Y bones, by the way. You can see them right, right. there. So we're going to do like a, you know, we do like a, the width of a hand, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more. So we're going to take this right there. Right now, Mara is portioning it. Like imagine for a meal for one person. You know, these are portions. I'm okay, curious now. to see where this goes. Where the vent is, okay. All right, the anus. Um, that's where the Y bones kind of stop. You can feel them; they're right up to here, and they kind of stop right here, which kind of lines up with the vent. Right? Okay. So you can actually take this piece off, and you won't even have to bone it. Okay. Oh, well, I just felt a bone there. So the tail section is really boneless, just yeah, like most really fish. Boneless, and um, all right. What I did forget to do was, as I cut these, was to skin it. 
Mm -hmm. That was mistake number one today. But they'll, but judge they will. They know how to do that. Okay. Look at that. Look how beautiful. beautiful. And it's like really not much of a bloodline. Nope. Which is great. I, mean, I remember when I tried it before, it was very mild, like cod. Like cod. Really? Like cod? In my then opinion. I, then I think that my, the recipe I picked was perfect. Tonight we're going to pan sear this in browned butter. Ooh, it sounds good. Nice. Okay. So these are let's, portions. Yeah, they break the portions and it's, let's, the slime is lessening. <laughs> okay, so first thing is we want to take these rib bones off, right? Yep. So we get underneath these ribs. Okay. And we just put that little bit of pressure. You're going to probably miss the first one. Okay. Looks good though. A lot of rib meat there. See, there's always going to be that little one right there because that kind of starts after you start the blade. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's the rib cage off. Now, wait. Okay, now you see the Y bones? Right. We go right in front of them. And then we cut down until we feel them. And then we follow them to the end. I can move this closer to the edge of the board. You see them right there? Right. Now they, they start to end. You're going to push with your knife. Okay. And that's where they end, right there. You see? Got it. This, this is the first piece, so these are actually longer up in here. The next part. So they have a very distinct curve to them. You can see in the camera real well. The seam here. I was trying to avoid that. Okay, and there's that. And that's pretty much it. That's your Y bone. Actually, went a little too close before, mm -hmm. but if you cut this in there, that's the Y. See. There's the Y right there. There's a bone on both sides of that cut. Got it, just like the letter Y. Okay, I'll take that off. Okay, now this, we just fold this up, and that's one fillet right there. I'd have to say, what, 75% of the fish, would you right. say? I mean, I see what you're doing, and it makes a lot of sense, because it's a lot easier to work with when you portion it up, versus trying to extract all the Y bones in one shot. Because it's just... Well, you know, the knife is only so long. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And to try to fillet that, you have to kind of move down the fish as you go. Right. All right. Again, so there's the Y bone. This is this this is this one's going to be a little bit straighter, and these bones start getting smaller as we get to the back. So you want to put your knife right on top of where the bone, right on top of the edge of this bone. Cut down until you feel them, and then you start. Then you kind of sew them. Don't put a lot of pressure. You want that knife to ride those bones down until you get to the end of them. Okay, right there. Now, here's a little thing I want to show you. There's a little seam here. I tried to cut a little bit above it. This little seam mm -hmm. is where this, the other side of this wide bone is. Mm -hmm. I tried to cut a little bit away from it, try to save some meat. It wasn't worth it. So, kind of cut into that. Again, get that, feel those bones. And just cut along here. All right. Cut along here. Yeah, this, this here. And we cut along that one there. Alright, good job. Because if you can see your finger through it, that means you're keeping it nice. That means you're saving the meat. Alright, so that's not so difficult, right? You know, everybody's so, complaining, oh, it's so hard to bone, so hard to no, bone. It's not that crazy. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I hear it, knife. even like the minute your knife hits it. Yeah. You can hear that, that, yeah. that sawing. The rubbing. Noise. All right, again, there's that seam, that mm -hmm. white seam. We're going to go right in there. I'll tell you, this, this, is, this fish, though, is hitting this knife pretty good. Okay. And then you just go right underneath that. Bam. 
that's a whole filet right there. And, and you know, if I did this before, I'd probably be a little bit more deft at it and a little bit faster. So, sure. but that's it. I mean, it's, it's a, that's a good portion of meat, and that's going to come real nice. Now, this one, we're going to do the full filet, and you're going to see how much of a pain in the neck it is. <laughs> All right. All right. So Eli and I had a little bit of a discussion during our commercial break, <laughs> and I'll make sure to put an advertisement right there. I'm gonna do. It's called the zipper method. Okay. I never did it before, but we're gonna give it a try. It looked really cool. You know, looked easy. You know, just like hand gliding. <laughs> that looks easy too. All right. So we're, All right, so we're gonna fillet. We're gonna skin this first. All right. Just like any other fish. I have to take off that belly piece right there, and along with that, this uh, that fin, which is going to get you know, it fouls up the knife as you're trying to cut across the skin. It okay, okay, look at that. Ah, nothing missing, nothing there, no chunks, no meats missing, straight okay. leather. Let's wipe off the scales. Do you have this lateral line here? You're supposed to cut right here. Okay. Line. Straight down the middle. Okay, right down there. Now you grab the fish. Oh boy. And you just pull it. God, I hope this works. Where'd you read about this? Alright, and it just pulls that bottom fillet off. Some crazy dude on a form. Okay, there you go. Look. Hey, it looked like it's working. Then it worked out nice. So now you have the loin and you have this piece. Isn't that beautiful? Now this side is the side that has the Y bones. Okay. All right, that actual rip was that seam I showed you. Uh-huh. Okay, so this is the outside of the Y bone. So we're gonna cut this after. Um, look, this actually, this side, except for the ribs, is boneless. Okay. So we're gonna take these ribs off. What the hell is this now? More surprised. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, the uh, zipper method's a lie. No, I'm just wondering if uh, if if that split the Y bone. Maybe that's what that did. Mm. See how much more difficult it is to like try and get these ribs off because now you have to kind of slide yeah. this knife all the way along here without nothing to work with. Hold on to. Yeah. You know, this way, I can press the knife along the ribs like I did with the skin. It was a little bit easier than trying to pull it off. We're trying to teach people here. And you're, we're all learning. We're, we're, we're giving this people... This is the I second time I've ever seen a pike clean. The first time was by myself, and now this... I feel like portioning it was, is easier to work oh, with. It's, it's, I knew it was going to be easier. Um, I totally knew that, it was gonna be, that was going to be easier. This is, this is, this is I knew it was going to be a pain in the neck. I don't like the way it's coming out. I don't like the portions. This might be worth it if you were frying it, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want to do nuggets. But um, in general, it's just it's too long of a fish, and that, that's what I kind of felt was going to be the issue here. This really isn't that different than what's going on up here. I mean, it, right. this is this is this and that together, and this is what we're doing here. But it's only this, right. so it's this thin piece of meat. Um, so it doesn't really. Look that well. So if 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 this is the way I learned how to clean it, I would probably never do it again. Really? Yeah, it's because it's such a pain in the neck. Yeah. No, and this might even be if you wanted to. I mean, I timed what took longer. This was an eight-minute job. Um, this way it was like six minutes, and it was just it seemed much cleaner overall too. It's cl yeah, it was definitely cleaner and nicer. I mean, here, look, I'm even missing bones. That one, I didn't, I, I didn't miss a single bone. I would definitely not do it this way again. You know, definitely portion it out. I wouldn't. I mean, it's, you know what this is good for? If you want to just take the loin and throw the rest of the fish away. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and there's guys that do that. It's like the guys that eat the white side of the flounder. They don't eat the brown side. Yeah. I don't get it. The brown side, not the white. Yeah, yeah, no, they, yeah. They, they eat the brown and not the white, or they yeah, they eat the brown side historically. Oh. They used to say that white side of a flounder was impossible to fly. And that the brown side had the meat on it. Remember? I filleted a sundial, okay? So if you can fillet a sundial, you can full a 12-inch sundial, you can fillet the white side of a nice size keeper flounder. Alright, so this is it. I mean I guess we're gonna portion this off. 
Um, I would do, you know, a hand's length. I would maybe cut this into three parts. It's a good color flush, too. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice and clean. Um, you know, I don't know if the lighting's going to make it look a little bit yellow, but it's, you know, it's good. It smells nice. It's fresh. Can't get better than that, right? Yeah, it doesn't, so, it doesn't smell good. At the, I think it's the slime that has that odor to it. Yeah. It has this very strong odor, the slime, but the meat is... I mean, there's a lot of fish like that, snakehead, etc., mm -hmm. and they're like funky until you get to the meat. All right, so let's. Uh, all right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're going to do pan-seared northern pike with uh, pan-seared and, and browned butter, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna make honey um, honey glazed vegetables. We'll do that real quick in a pan. So. That, I think, is going to taste good. I All think right. it's going to work well with this. We're going to season this now. So we're going to season this with salt, pepper, and a little bit of garlic powder. We can't show you the brand because they're not paying us in sponsorship. For ah, it. he knows, but. he knows. It's, it's red-capped garlic but Oh, no, you're so I'm green. Not you. you're I'm so not showing you. You have to pay for this, guys. <laughs> if you want to be seen, you got to pay. Where's the money? <laughs> the garlic powder. Uh, but sea salt, a good sea salt in a, in a grinder to me is the best. It, it just, it lays better. Um, that Red Cross iodized salt, it's, I don't, I, I don't even think I have one. Um, I think when I got married, they put one in the uh, closet because if Italians put it, salt in, the, in your closet when you get a new home to scare away uh, all the gnomes and everything. <laughs> and I kind of like gnomes. I already clarified the butter. That's right there. It's uh, brown butter. You want to clarify it when you're pan searing because if you use straight butter, it'll smoke. This has a higher heat point and it'll cook better. And if you want to bring the heat point up a little bit more, you can put a little bit of olive oil or better than olive oil, like a little bit of peanut oil or a touch of grapeseed oil. Over here we have some ch chopped shallots. We're going to do a honey glaze, so Ooh. I don't want to... Um, I don't want to use garlic, I think it's a little too strong. Shallots have a nice mild flavor. Nice. A little zucchini. A little bit of carrot. Oh man, this is going to be good. Now what we're going to do is put the cover on it and let them steam a little bit. Alright, so we're going to put a couple of dabs of butter in there. Alright, let that melt out. We're going to use local honey, and this is actually Amish honey. Mm -hmm. So Virgil, New York, and you've got to get it with the little bear. Of course. I like the, I like the little bear. So I'm going to put a little bit of honey in there. Uh, mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. We'll get that thickened up. Straight into butter. Now, how do you, best thing when you don't want something to stick, mm -hmm. you put it in and you move it. Then what happens is the heat will cause the water vapor to come out of it and steam, and it'll separate the meat. Uh -huh. What happens is the heat attracts the proteins, so you need a barrier, and that's what that does. When you put it in, and then you move it real quick, it gets hot enough, and now the steam starts coming, and now you see how everything's nice and loose? Yep. Of course, the nonstick helps, but you I've had stuff stick to nonstick before. Sauce here. Yeah, what you thinking? Jack this up a little bit. Well, some extra butter is always good. Okay. 
Follow this man on Instagram. All his information's in the video description. His restaurant, Soda Voce. This man has, does some pretty amazing things with all sorts of food. That right there is the finished Northern Pike. Well done. I'm gonna take a picture too, give me a second. All right, well, he, this is probably, this is the second time I'm eating Nor Northern Pike right now. Um, and it's the first time I made it. And you did a wonderful job. I kind of winged this saying. recipe, so I hope it's good. Don't forget, the guys on YouTube who are cleaning it and while you're watching them, they've probably cleaned like hundreds in their lives. This is the first time Mario ever cleaned one. So, you know, it's normal to make mistakes. Like, it, you, nobody goes to zero to 100. You've had it before though, right? I've had it before and I like the flavor of it. Yeah. It's just very mild. I had it once last spring, so here we go. It's practically almost sweet. So good. You know what? You're right. This reminds me of cod. Actually, whiting. Whiting. It reminds me of whiting. Texture um, and the flavor. It's very close to walleye. I'd say whiting, cod, in that range, yeah. I mean, if you had to compare it, it's a white flesh fish that I think everybody that goes crazy over walleye and cod, this will fall right into that category. Right. I'm not that confident in my knife skills, and I would probably do it the first time I marry them. Portion it out so you can just work your whole knife instead of just kind of, you know, working along, working along. It'll just be easier overall, overall to do, I think. All right, we are going to finish eating this pike. Thanks to Mario again. Check out his restaurant on his Instagram page. I'll leave all that stuff in the description of the video. Um, you know, comments, questions in below. If you like the video, leave a th thumbs up. I got a couple other videos coming up from with Marion also. We got some couple some things in the archives we're gonna put up there. But uh, yeah, that was great. Northern Pike, big win, first time doing it. Definitely, yeah. definitely a, a fish that I will be eating more often. Yeah. So we did the lake trout. We did the salmon. Check those videos out. So all right, guys. Like the video. I'll catch up with you guys later, okay? Take care, guys.